live from Washington, D.C. Jay Sekulow Live. Phone lines are open for your questions right now. And now, Chief Counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice, Jay Sekulow. Welcome to Jay Sekulow Live. We have breaking news, folks. President Trump has signed an executive order reinstating Ronald Reagan's Mexico City policy. What does that mean? This is a policy that prohibits U.S. funds, so that means your taxpayer dollars, from going to international organizations that provide, so actually perform abortions or promote abortion services. Yes, under the last eight years of the Obama administration, your taxpayer dollars could go to those types of organizations, organizations that were performing abortions overseas, so we were paying for that, or promoting abortions overseas. But now, President Trump has reinstated a policy, began, it was started by uh, President Reagan, that prohibits those organizations like Planned Parenthood International from receiving those funds. This is breaking news and a very important first step in the in the pro-life efforts of the Trump presidency. This is part one of defunding Planned Parenthood uh, completely. And this is interesting because uh, Planned Parenthood just sent out this email about how excited they were about their protest this weekend. I want to remind people that the protest they saw on Sunday, and if anybody had family that really joined, I think people were misguided and misled. That was a, a protest for abortion. They don't like to say that, Planned Parenthood. They don't want to make it that clear, but they do send it out to their leaders. And yet, what did they get in return? Which I think, uh, you know, I think it just speaks volumes to the changes that are happening. They stop receiving foreign funds, which I, which probably was in the hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, and they were paying for actual abortions uh, with our money and doing those in foreign countries. Just think about the, the level of that. That is now done because of action taken today by President Trump in the Oval Office. Well, plenty of people are asking why. Why was this even a policy in general? Why were we funding abortions internationally? Uh, it's it was part of U.S. law that we prov- we would support these uh, international organizations that do health care, right? So we help you through NGOs, through uh, charities. We do, you know, the U.S. government supports it's some very good. You know, think about the charities. Think about you know, uh, uh, Samaritan's Purse and others that do these working countries that may provide, they may receive federal assistance. Some do, some don't. Uh, you know, some make the decision not to receive federal funds, but. Part of this was and how the left is they've worked this into family planning, reproductive health. So, yes, we have been funding these organizations who are then allowed to use that money to perform abortions and to promote abortion services. That is now done in this uh, this Monday and really what is kind of the beginning of the Trump presidency. Let's go right to the phones. Take a call in this first uh, in this segment. Let's go to let's go to Mary Beth about the Obamacare mandate. Let's go her on line five in Maryland. You're on the air. Yes, thanks, Jordan. Thanks for putting me on. And I just want to um, affirm what Patty said earlier. Um, I'm close to 60 and never knew for years that our money was going to uh, to Planned Parenthood, um, to the Planned Parenthood organization, either domestically or overseas. Um, what I wanted to ask today was what impact will the removal of the individual mandate um, for health care have on the insurance companies? I heard over the weekend, I think it was on um, Fox News, they were um, conjecturing that um, it may cause the insurance companies, some it of the insurance listen, companies. It, it, it will, Mary Beth, it's going to shake up the insurance companies and, and for good reasons because Obamacare was a bailout of big insurance. Okay, they got there. You can't buy across state lines. They're basically a monopoly on insurance. So it's going to shake up that industry. But folks are not going to mass abandon health their health policies for right now. There needs to be a replacement. There will be. So yes, there will be a shakeup of the industry. That's what the American people voted for. Nothing here though forces you to drop your plan or not have your coverage. That is all bogus info. But will there be a shakeup of the health industry? You better believe it. And they're going to have to get with it uh, and with the times. Folks, we need you to fight now for life uh, harder than you've ever fought before. We've got a pro-life House of Representatives, a pro-life Senate, and a pro-life President. We need to get the bill to defund Planned Parenthood on President Trump's desk. 
He will sign it, but we've got to get it there. Go to ACLJ.org or call now and sign our petition to defund Planned Parenthood at 877-989-2255. That's a toll-free number, 877-989-2255 or sign at ACLJ.org. We'll be right back. The fight to protect life is intensifying. Now, with the Trump administration at the helm, efforts are ramping up to defend life and defund Planned Parenthood, the nation's largest abortion provider. In reality, what abortion is, is the taking of an unborn child's life. Planned Parenthood receives hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars each year. And at the ACLJ, we're working with the Trump administration and members of Congress to stop the flow of taxpayer dollars to Planned Parenthood. America will look back on this season in history and will be mortified about what happened in the abortion industry. I didn't want anyone to see me. I didn't want anyone to know. We're aggressively fighting on Capitol Hill to stop funding big abortion. The time to do that is right now. Add your name to our petition to defend life and defund Planned Parenthood. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255, or you can add your name online, aclj.org. You know, during the break, folks, I was talking to our Facebook audience about something I think is very important as we see the reinstatement of the Mexico City policy this morning of breaking news uh, by President Trump uh, signed as an executive order from the Oval Office. President Obama had repealed this by executive order. This policy prohibits any U.S. foreign funding to organizations, international organizations like Planned Parenthood International that perform or promote abortion. None of them can receive or even apply for U.S. money, so no taxpayer dollars to them. That is a very key move, a pro-life move by President Trump. Now, it comes on uh, the heels of yesterday's 44th uh, anniversary of Roe versus Wade. That big, what is called Women's March, is really an abortion march. Maybe people were misguided by that, but just look at what uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren was wearing. Uh, she had a scarf on for Planned Parenthood. It was an abortion march uh, yesterday with good reason. You know, Planned Parenthood has been referred by the House and Senate to the Department of Justice for criminal prosecution. Guess who is about to become Attorney General of the United States? Jeff Sessions. If you're Planned Parenthood right now, you just lost all your international foreign funding by the stroke of the pen. The Hyde Amendment, which prevents any federal funding going to pay for abortions, is about to be codified. That legislation will drop tomorrow by our good friend Congressman Chris Smith. And you have a House and Senate pro-life majorities and a president who will be willing to sign the defunding of your organization, the defunding of Planned Parenthood. Before we take your phone calls, I want to play you a portion of a trailer of our ACLJ documentary, Abortion, Inc. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortions. I still remember staring up at that bright light and counting backwards from 10. In reality, what abortion is, is the taking of an unborn child's life. I didn't want anyone to see me. I didn't want anyone to know. You're destroying the unborn and committing murder. This really is a filthy business. America will look back on this season in history and will be mortified about what happened in the abortion industry. As you see from that trailer of our documentary, ACLJ Films documentary, Abortion, Inc., the abortion industry is, in fact, it's a big business. Let's take some phone calls now, Logan. Uh, some folks calling in. I know people are excited about the reinstatement of the Mexico City policy. Let's go to Patty in Williamsburg, Ohio. Hi, line, Patty. Line three. Hi, and I am so glad. I, I, I just purchased a car recently. I was driving a 20-year-old car, and I now get serious as a trial basis. Right, yeah, so, so you're so listening on Sirius here. XM. But um, you know what? I am so. First off, I was glad to hear about the Reagan Mexico City. Um, you know what he signed this morning. I'm not in front of the TV, but in hearing this and hearing your program, I am so upset. And I think a lot of people are like me. I'm in my 60s. We didn't even know that money was going for oh, yeah. abortions. We're pro life, and that's why I'm sorry. But it's so important to to. Uh, 
support ACLJ and, and programs like yours because we can't, this common citizen cannot know everything. No. We don't know. It's, you know, it's our, our job. It's our job, Patty. I really appreciate your kind words. I'm glad you're able to listen on Sirius XM. Uh, we're on channel 131 there. The, the, the idea is uh, for organizations like ours is to keep you updated, obviously, but it is shocking to a lot of people to know that for the past eight years, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars have gone to organizations that actually perform abortions overseas and that promote abortions overseas. I mean, that is the truth. It was It's actually a workaround. The federal law, which, which prohibits the Hyde Amendment, which prohibits actual taxpayer dollars paying for abortions in the U.S., uh, this this uh, loophole uh, internationally, when when President Obama and past pro-abortion presidents like President Clinton changed this policy, which they can do by executive order, it meant, Patty, that hundreds of millions of dollars uh, of your taxpayer dollars, my taxpayer dollars, uh, would go to organizations that actually perform and promote abortions overseas. I mean, it is pretty shocking, Patty, but this is uh, the beginning of the Trump presidency, and we appreciate you calling in. That's right. It ties in perfectly with what's going on here with the ACLJ. With so many of you guys watching, nearly 11 thousand people watching on Facebook and millions listening on radio hearing this breaking news. You can join the ACLJ. Go to ACLJ.org. You not only can you sign the petition, support the ACLJ, but you can support the ACLJ financially. Again, just ACLJ.org for more information on that. And again, please share this if you're watching on social media. Let's go to Rachel in Pennsylvania who's calling on Line 6. Rachel, you're on the air. Thanks for calling. Thank you so much for taking my call. I had long ago given up on mainstream media and trying to get any accurate information and I'm just so grateful to find a place where I can become informed because I feel so uninformed because I won't watch mainstream media. But well, you know, Rachel, I think that... Uh, we really appreciate you, you calling in, first of all, and, and listening. We're, this is, You're listening to the JSECUO Live radio broadcast, and we're an organization called the ACLJ, and you can find out more about us. So you're driving right now, so here's an easy way to just remember. It's just ACLJ.org is our website, right. and you can see our, our broadcast there, see all the radio stations. I don't know if you're just driving through Pennsylvania right now or if, if that's where you live, um, but you go to ACLJ.org, and we've also got the show on Facebook uh, and Periscope. So remember that so you don't forget us uh, yeah. tomorrow. Uh, if you just remember ACLJ.org, we really yeah, appreciate you, can get, you listening. You can get the app as well on your iPhone. If you have an iPhone, yeah, it's a great way to, to keep involved with in what's going on at the ACLJ, including being part of the show. Let's go ahead and move on, take another call. Let's go to Mark, who's been a hold a while. Let's go to Mark in Mississippi online, too. Hey, Mark. Hey, how you doing, man? You guys are doing a great job. Thank Thanks. you. Uh, I just wanted to know um, what the... Uh, mandated health policy that we're being made to pay or get fined are they going to take away the fines now they have been i mean those fines have been taken away mark let me go back to that this is an executive order over the weekend mark um section uh two of this executive order this was a uh, executive order signed by donald trump it's it's titled minimizing the economic burden of the patient protection and Affordable Care Act pending repeal. So it says we intend to repeal this. But in the meantime, um, I don't want to read all, all of this, but it, it's got it's a, the legalese, the jargon. It says, to the maximum extent permitted by law, and it instructs the HHS secretary, heads of all other government agencies, uh, and all authority possible to uh, waive, defer, grant exemptions from, delay uh, the implementation of any provision or requirement of the Affordable Care Act that would impose a fiscal burden on any state or a cost, fee, tax, penalty, or regulatory burden on people like you, Mark, individuals, families, health care providers, insurers, patients, recipients of health care services, purchasers of health insurance, or makers of medical devices, products, or medications. Uh, so, yes, Mark, you have received that release, uh, relief. The fines have been abolished, and this uh, effectively uh, ends the individual mandate of the Affordable Care Act. So we appreciate your your phone call. You know, this is a lot of information for people to take in the first really 72 hours of the Trump presidency. So appreciate that, Mark. Folks, you can take action on this. We've got a petition working now. We've got this pro-life House of Representatives, a pro-life Senate, slimmer majority there in the Senate, and a pro-life president. We need to get to President Trump's desk uh, the law, the legislation to defund Planned Parenthood. We've got a petition going now. Uh, you can sign that. We need your support. It's a time to stand for life. Take advantage of this opportunity. Go to aclj.org or call this toll-free number right now and add your name to our petition to defund 
the abortion industry to defund Planned Parenthood. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 877-989-2255 or go to aclj.org. We'll be right back. The fight to protect life is intensifying. Now with the Trump administration at the helm, efforts are ramping up to defend life and defund Planned Parenthood, the nation's largest abortion provider. In reality, what abortion is, is the taking of an unborn child's life. Planned Parenthood receives hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars each year. And at the ACLJ, we're working with the Trump administration and members of Congress to stop the flow of taxpayer dollars to Planned Parenthood. America will look back on this season in history and will be mortified about what happened in the abortion industry. I didn't want anyone to see me. I didn't want anyone to know. We're aggressively fighting on Capitol Hill to stop funding big abortion. The time to do that is right now. Add your name to our petition to defend life and defund Planned Parenthood. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255, or you can add your name online, aclj.org. One more time, just to let everybody know, important uh, news, breaking news, really, still as of this hour, uh, President Trump has signed an executive order reinstating Ronald Reagan's Mexico City policy, which prohibits U.S. funds going to organizations overseas, international organizations that provide, so actually perform abortions or even promote uh, abortions, they can no longer receive U.S. funding uh, for those international aid that they do overseas. That includes Planned Parenthood International. And just to make sure everybody's clear about this, because we've had people on Facebook commenting and others commenting say, I thought fa- Planned Parenthood didn't even do abortions. By the way, they did. They are the number one abortion provider in the U.S. They are the number one abortion provider in the world. They did over 300,000 abortions in, in the last fiscal year that they reported here in the United States. 300,000 babies killed. But here's their own president talking to Dave Ax- David Axelrod about how they perform abortions. So remember, if you were if you had people marching yesterday, they were marching for abortion. Whether they knew it or not. Yeah, whether they knew it or not. Ab- they were marching for killing babies. And here's their own words from Cecile Richards, the president of Planned Parenthood, Bite 32. We are a provider of abortion service. Uh, We think it's important that it's safe and legal. It's been a right that women have had uh, for more than 40 years in America. And people feel strongly. And frankly, there's there's stronger support for Roe versus Wade now than there has ever been. So except for the fact that there's a pro-life house elected by the American people, a pro-life Senate majority and a a strongly pro-life president who said throughout the campaign trail he's going to defund you. Folks, when we talk about Planned Parenthood, we talk about the abortion issue, I think sometimes we we see it in the broader sense of this pro-life effort and the marches and the legislation, but it's personal as well. Obviously, the, the children that, that whose, law, whose lives are lost are so important, but also the personal effect uh, this has had on, on individuals and women specifically. We've also looked at this issue. We've talked to brave uh, women uh, for our ACLJ documentary, Abortion Inc. Let's take a look now at some of that documentary. I was in a back room. Um, it was pretty much bench seating around um, three walls. There were about eight, nine other girls in there, and there was a little draw curtain um, changing room with gowns and a big silver safety pin with a number on it. And so I was a number, and I think I was 514 or something like that. I just, those numbers stand out. And while you're waiting for your number to be called, you um, kind of make your way down the, the bench line and your vitals are taken. And um, the nurse or whoever she is, you know, tells you, this is what you can expect. This is the kind of procedure you're going to have. I have the vacuum procedure and, um, that's it. And it was just kind of real, very clinical, you know, just very matter of fact, like, this is what you're doing. This is what's going to happen. Wait for your number to be called. And so some of the girls around me were really quiet. Um, I was re- very, very quiet. Um, some were crying. Some were just gabbing with each other like it was, you know, no big deal. I still remember lying on a steel cold table and staring up at that bright light and counting backwards from 10. The anesthesiologist came in and um, explained what he'd be doing. 
And right as he was putting my IV in, the doctor comes in and um, he just sat at the end of the table and he never said a word to me. He just sat and he looked at me um, and he's flipping through a book and he's marking off things and flipping through pages and marking off. And that was it. He never had any interaction with me. And the anesthesiologist finally just said, all right, count, count from 10 before you know it, it'll all be over. It was very, very painful. I've never felt pain like that in my life. They didn't even, I don't even really remember them talking to me at all during the procedure. I remember the nurse giving me sedation and I, she just kept rubbing my arm, shushing me, telling me to be quiet. And I remember looking around and seeing about three or four other girls waking up also. And I got dressed, feeling very groggy, and I went into the other room. And I just remember waking up and looking down the row, and, and all these girls were, were just leaned over asleep. And um, once they saw me sort of stirring, waking up, they came over. They had a little bag with my clothes in it. And they just stood me up right there in front of everybody, got me dressed uh, right in the middle of the room and then gave me a glass of water and uh, some crackers and sent me out the door. And I went and sat on the curb and waited for my boyfriend to come. When I stood up, their sugar and cookies didn't work and I fainted and and I think I fainted because of the horror of what I had done. I realized that I was missing a large part of me and it was too much for me to take. I woke up crying and I was actually, ended up being pretty volatile and, and got a little physical with um, the nurse that tried to um, come in time with a puke bucket because I was getting sick and um, I ended, I slapped her across the face. Um, and I remember because I didn't want anyone to see me. I didn't, I didn't want anyone to know. So anyway, I was pretty physical. So they took me and they put me in my own little private room. And one of the nurses sat in the corner and um, just let me cry it out. And so I sat on a table and I just literally walked, rocked back and forth. And I think probably a couple hours passed and I just finally got too tired and um, they let me go. And interestingly enough, um, they don't let you walk back out the front. There's a private exit. And later on in life, I wondered, had I seen someone like me in the state I was in at that moment after that abortion walk out, back out the front clinic. Maybe I wouldn't have done it. Let's look at the history a bit now. We need to, I think, dive into this and understand who we're up against here in the abortion industry and Planned Parenthood specifically. We've done this in our ACLJ documentary, Abortion Inc. Let's go to that now. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortions. The majority in cases from Texas and Georgia said that the decision to end a pregnancy during the first three months belongs to the woman and her doctor, not the government. One of the things that most Americans think and think wrongly is that abortion began with Roe v. Wade. Uh, the truth is, is that every single civilization throughout all of antiquity and all the way up to the present time has had as a major component part of the culture, abortion. I think from the very beginning, uh, I came with a large family. My mother died young, 11 children. That made an impression on me as a child. Mm -hmm. I was a trained nurse, went among the people. I saw women who asked to have some means whereby they wouldn't have to have another pregnancy too early after the last child, the last abortion, which many of them had. So there's a number of things that are one after the other that really made you feel that you had to do something. At the end of the 19th century, the beginning of the 20th century, there were a number of revolutionary figures who wanted to remake the world as a kind of revolutionary challenge, to remake it in a kind of uh, pseudo-scientific fashion. Uh, they wanted to usher in Tomorrowland. Planned Parenthood and Margaret Sanger, uh, who was the founder of that organization, were eugenicists. 
and eugenicists are not killing babies because of some political issue. They are on a mission to purify. Planned Parenthood began as a eugenics movement. This was to create the superior race. And the target of Planned Parenthood were those that they deemed to be less desirable. And they viewed the minorities in our communities as the least desirable. She believed that, uh, that sexuality is a powerful engine to drive social change. And so she uh, sought to usher in this revolutionary new age, starting with human sexuality, and do it by scientific means, by eliminating unwanted people groups, what she called human weeds. And uh, the human weeds were specifically identified as uh, blacks, Hispanics, uh, Eastern Europeans, Slavs. She believed that these were sort of lower on the evolutionary chain. And so to bring about this new age of a race of thoroughbreds, as she called them, uh, you had to eliminate the bad gene stocks out of the human gene pool. Well, abortion, birth control, those, those kinds of things really emerged out of that ideology. It wasn't medicine. It wasn't to help women. It wasn't to give freedom of choice. It was really, how do we reshape society? Planned Parenthood had a history, according to its founders, Margaret Sanger, of targeting Negro leaders. And she said, Negroes are like weeds who need to be exterminated. We don't want that word to get out. So what we need to do is to cultivate some of their leaders, get them on our side, have them think that we want to help them. This is how Planned Parenthood went after African-American leaders. They still do it today. The eugenics movement is dead. They don't call it eugenics anymore. Planned Parenthood doesn't use the word eugenics. But the fact of the matter is, the result that they're getting is exactly the same. It's the elimination of a race. Where are these abortions taking place? Minority communities. Folks, as we finish out the broadcast today, you can take action here by adding your name in a petition to support the defunding of Planned Parenthood, the defunding of the abortion industry. We've got to continue to build on our momentum. A pro-life house, a pro-life Senate, a pro-life president. Let's keep at it. Let's get to work, folks. Sign this petition now. Call our toll-free number, 877-989-2255. That's 877-989-2255. Or go to aclj.org. We'll talk to you next time. The fight to protect life is intensifying. Now, with the Trump administration at the helm, efforts are ramping up to defend life and defund Planned Parenthood, the nation's largest abortion provider. In reality, what abortion is, is the taking of an unborn child's life. Planned Parenthood receives hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars each year. And at the ACLJ, we're working with the Trump administration and members of Congress to stop the flow of taxpayer dollars to Planned Parenthood. America will look back on this season in history and will be mortified about what happened in the abortion industry. I didn't want anyone to see me. I didn't want anyone to know. We're aggressively fighting on Capitol Hill to stop funding big abortion. The time to do that is right now. Add your name to our petition to defend life and defund Planned Parenthood. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255, or you can add your name online, aclj.org.